Hannibal Barca, who lived in the 3rd or 2nd centuries BC, was one of those who epitomized an entire era. This man went down in history as a great strategist and commander who devoted his life to war with Rome. Many of his techniques were later adopted by the Romans, and the military historian Theodore Aero Dodge called Hannibal, the father of strategy. As the son of Hamilcar, the Carthaginian commander of the last years of the First Punic War, he swore on his father's deathbed that he would hate the Romans forever and would not stop until Rome fell. After the end of the First Punic War, Rome and Carthage made peace. But Hannibal realized that this peace would not last long and began to prepare for a new war to gain control of the Mediterranean. Knowing full well that Rome had very good intelligence and there was no point in going to Rome from the sea, Hannibal decides to go by land, through Carthaginian Spain. The Second Punic War began in 218 BC with a minor conflict in disputed territory. In 219 BC, in the Carthaginian city of Sagunt, the Romans established the rule of a party hostile to Carthage, thereby staging a coup. Hannibal laid siege to the city, claiming that such interference was contrary to earlier agreements. The Romans, in turn, demanded that the siege be lifted. A clash ensued. After taking Sagunt and strengthening his position in Spain, Hannibal decides to invade Italy directly. He begins crossing the Pyrenees, leaving an 11,000-strong army led by his brother to protect the rear of the conquered lands. Hannibal's army had 12,000 cavalrymen, 90,000 infantrymen, and 37 elephants. This crossing was very difficult for the Carthaginians. The Gallic tribes resisted stubbornly to the Rhone, and Hannibal had to fight a very hard battle to get across. From Gaul, Hannibal decided to march directly into Italy through the Alps, hoping to attack the poorly defended Roman borders from the northwest. The Roman consul Publius Cornelius Scipio at the same time sends most of his troops to Spain. The march across the Alps, which took 15 days, was very risky, but it made Hannibal famous for centuries. This march is considered one of the most famous military achievements in the history of the ancient world. Crossing the elephants over the narrow mountain trails was incredibly difficult, and the army lost more than half of its men and elephants. As they crossed the river Druensia and began their ascent into the Alps, Hannibal's warriors were horrified by the sight of the impassable mountains and glaciers. In addition, the foothills were inhabited by Gauls, who knew the terrain well and could attack the Carthaginian warriors suddenly. On the ninth day, after suffering great losses, Hannibal's warriors finally reached the pass. There they decided to rest for two days. But then it snowed, and the army had an even more difficult descent ahead. The warriors became despondent, but Hannibal found words to encourage his men to keep going. At the end of their descent, the soldiers came upon an impregnable icy rock, near which they had to stand for four days. First, they burned the rocks and then poured vinegar over them thus blowing up the impregnable rock. Then, by smashing cracks in the rock with their guns, the Carthaginians made it passable. The local Gallic tribes saw Hannibal as a liberator and joined his army, of which only 26,000 soldiers remained after coming down from the Alps. In Rome, the Senate immediately assembled an army of 14,000 horsemen and 300,000 infantry, leaving another half million men in reserve. The first battle took place on the banks of the Ticino River in December 218. Hannibal understood that the army, fatigued by heavy campaigns, would not be able to resist the Romans in a frontal attack, especially since his troops were worse equipped. So the commander decides on a trick. Two armies stand on opposite banks of the Ticino. One of Hannibal's cavalry units, having crossed the river, pretends to retreat. The Roman legionnaires, having begun their pursuit, crossed to the other bank and immediately encountered the Carthaginian army. Soon the cavalry, standing in cover, struck the Romans in the rear, whereupon the enemy fled. After this victory, the general decided to fortify himself in northern Italy. He realized that he could not attack Rome immediately, since Carthage had no funds or supplies, and Hannibal had lost sight in one eye after an illness during the campaign. He planned to recruit more allies, but no one but the Gauls risked going against Rome. 
In March 217 the new Roman consuls, Gaius Flaminius and Gnaeus Servilius moved north. However, even this time Hannibal managed to defeat the 30,000th army of Flaminius by cunning, luring the Roman soldiers into a trap in the valley of Lake Trasimene. The whole of northern Italy came under the control of the Carthaginian general. Despite his success, Hannibal understood that it made no sense to attack Rome now. After all, the capital not only had to be captured but also held. And the army of Hannibal was not so strong, and siege weapons it did not have. During the entire 217 years, the commander was moving on the peninsula in the hope to entice to his side the Italian cities and finding the best place to prepare for the main battle of Rome. But neither the first nor the second succeeded him. Hannibal decided to stop to give his army a rest. Seeing the indecision of his enemy, the dictator Quintus Fabius Maximus decided to stand idly by and wait until Hannibal's army, deprived of support from Carthage, was weakened by starvation and disease. This silent confrontation lasted about a year, until the second appointed dictator, Marcus Mucius Rufus, engaged Hannibal in a battle in which he lost. This battle took place at Geronium. The war dragged on too long, so Rome begins to act. In 216, the Senate appoints consuls Gaius Terentius Veron and Lucius Aemilius Paulus as dictators and puts an army of 80,000 infantrymen and 7,000 horsemen at their disposal. At the same time, Hannibal's army consisted of 40,000 infantrymen and 10,000 horsemen. The battle took place near the city of Cannes, where on August 2, 216, legionaries under the command of Veron moved to attack. After luring Veron into the wide plain, Hannibal positioned the Gauls in the center, who began to flee during the battle. The Romans pursued them and were surrounded. Hannibal lined up his troops in the shape of a sickle and struck at the Roman troops, who were almost destroyed. Consul Aemilius Paulus and 44,000 legionaries were killed. Hannibal lost only 6,000 men. After that, Rome's dominance in southern Italy was shaken, and the way to the capital became open. Despite this, Hannibal was still in no hurry to march on Rome. He was sure that then all the inhabitants of the Eternal City would take up arms. Then he began to recruit allies, Macedonia and Syracuse, the Samnites, the Brutians, the Lucanians. Carthage also sent Hannibal reinforcements. Hannibal captures Capua, panic broke out in Rome, and the entire population of Latium rushed to save the Republic. The Romans laid siege to Capua. Wanting a diversion, Hannibal approached Rome a few miles away and met another 200,000 men on his way against his 40,000. The general was forced to retreat southward. In 211, Rome regained Capua, and the Carthaginians withdrew to Brutius. Hannibal had to urgently call off the campaign. In 202, Hannibal entered the Battle of Zama with the general Publius Cornelius Scipio, who dealt a crushing blow to the Carthaginian army. This battle was the last in the Second Punic War. Hannibal was defeated and Carthage was subjected to Rome.